welcome everyone this is kapil welcome to today's panel discussion on digital marketing outsource or do it in house uh, we'll wait for another couple of minutes let's make sure that everybody settles in right now i can see there are uh, 53 participants who have logged in so let's just get settled in and probably another minute and we'll start the session just to set the logistics by default all of you are muted any time during the panel discussion if you have any question just keep typing it down in the question panel and uh, we'll have a kind of a i have few questions already lined up so we'll take all those questions first and that would take about 30 minutes of time and uh, once we are over with those questions then we'll open the floor for open q and a and uh, i'll make sure that i'll take as many questions as possible in chronological order so any time related to this topic if you have any question to any of the panelists keep typing it down in the question panel <clears throat> i still see a lot of users in the process of logging in so let's just wait for another few seconds and then we'll start <clears throat> great so i think adit has also joined it great so i think it's time we can start the session now so first and foremost i really want to thank all of you for joining in today for today's panel discussion on digital marketing in house versus outsource to uh, take this discussion forward i have a very eminent list of panelists with me today and to start with i would like to welcome adwit sachdev uh, i'll give you a brief introduction of all of them adwit is a hyper growth marketing leader who has worked with several super fast growing organization in the b2c online space he's also a guest lecturer at several iits iims and other uh, premium institutions in the country welcome adwit and i'm talking about the premium institutions including digital with you for sure so he's also a, a, a guest uh, he's also a ted speaker by the way a best selling author a jury member at startup incubators and has won several awards in marketing and entrepreneurship so crazy about marketing he can be your best friend i, I remember i met adwit probably i think about 10 years ago and that time he was uh, he started an agency and was running by the name edigma later edigma got acquired by infibeans and then he headed the marketing at infibeans and i think for a period of time he has trained consulted coached many entrepreneurs across the world and now he's heading uh, as a he's actually uh, being part of the coins bcx and been there as a vp marketing he's instrumental in growing their user base the last i checked the details he was able to grow their user base 3 weeks in 6 months that's a phenomenal success so welcome adit and congratulations for all the success that you've created i'm really looking forward to hearing your views on how companies should handle their marketing initiative welcome thank you sir okay uh adit you can i think you're not audible just check your hello i guess yeah audible. you're audible now thank yeah. you good to see you after long Same here. Uh, another guest we have is Vidanga. Vidanga Bandhupadhyay. Vidanga is a seasoned professional marketing professional with more than 10 years experience across multiple industries and categories. And currently, Vidanga is working as an associate director at Performance India, and he looks after banking and financial services vertical. Yeah. I'm really looking forward, Vidanga, to uh, hearing your views more from an industry perspective and an agency perspective. In today's discussion, welcome, Vedanga. Right, and uh, thanks, then thanks, Kapil. Please to be part of this discussion. Uh, we have with us Udit Agarwal. Udit has over two decades of diverse experience in marketing, sales, and strategies, addressing enterprises, SME, and partner developer ecosystems. Udit has led marketing team at uh, brands such as SAP. Adobe and UI Park. His experience spans from uh, with from the conventional and the new age media tools, 
integrating marketing campaigns and lead generation campaigns. He's actually recognized as one of the top 100 IT marketers in the country in 2019 by Enterprise IT World and received the ROI award in 2020 by Serious Decisions, the best in class B2B marketing honor in Asia Pacific region. Great to have you here with us, Adit, and I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, with the rich experience that you have across multiple domains, particularly in the B2B space, there's a lot that all of us will gain out of it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kapil. And looking forward to having a meeting discussion. Thank you. Great. Now, coming to this topic, uh, in-house or outsource. I mean, just to give a little background, I was actually reading a few articles online just to prepare myself for this panel discussion. And I realized that most of them were talking positive about outsourcing, citing um, maybe the, the cost reduction or lack of experience at a brand level as a key reason. And then you realize that most of these articles are actually written by people who have some stakes um, in one of the companies which is offering these kind of services. So um, I thought, you know, probably in today's discussion, we are kind of have a little more neutral kind of a discussion and probably look into some of the hidden details which are actually not published online. Uh, it seems like people who are actually doing online or good uh, marketing in-house, they're not the one who are coming online and talking about it. So uh, before we actually move forward and take this discussion to the next level, uh, I actually let me quickly check who all is present in today's session. So I'm just launching this poll on your screen. I would request all the participants to select the option that best describes who you are and what you currently do. If you're a student or a fresher, please select the first option. If you're already in the sales marketing space, pick up the second option. If you're a digital marketer, pick up the third option. If you're a CX or an entrepreneur, pick up the fourth option. And if you're in some other functional role, you're still interested in knowing more about it, you can pick up the last option. So I would request everybody to please participate in this. We've got 70% people have voted so far. I'll just count till five, then I'll close the poll. Everybody please do that. One, two, three, four, and five. Fine, so here are the results. Let's see what, what's the kind of people who are present in today's session. It's great to see 26% are from sales and marketing domain and 25% are CXOs or entrepreneurs. Great, so looks like a good number of decision makers are today present in the today's session. That's interesting. And then there are good percentage of students and people from other functional role as well, right? And then possibly a good number of them from the digital marketing space as well. So I hope that gives you an idea of what all people are present in the panel and who all is there in the attending this panel discussion as well. So taking this discussion forward, I would what I'll do is I'll just quickly create a framework of where digital marketing really fits in in the entire customer journey. And this would possibly help all the people who are students or from the other domains or not well versed with the role that digital marketing really plays in any organization. And possibly this would also help us to have some advanced level conversation when we talk about how to take care of particular or in-depth issues while outsourcing or doing digital marketing in -house. So uh, when it comes to digital marketing, the first critical step is to, you know, that digital marketers do take care is building reach. So identifying the right channel to uh, uh, doing the right kind of a targeting so that you do that well is, is one part of digital marketing, but that's just one part of it. Most of the people think that that's what digital marketing is all about. But what you're doing with that reach is also very important. Either you're bringing them to one of your online presence, it could be your website, it could be your blog, or you're aggreg aggregating them on some platforms, maybe on Facebook or email, um, or some other community-driven channel that you've established. So that is very critical because most of the people that come or you reach out to may not be sales ready. So you need to aggregate them somewhere so that you can stay in touch with them. And there are various ways to do it. And if you don't do it, then the chances is that the maybe the ROI that you're getting out of your campaign may not be good enough. Then once that has happened, the, the next part is, okay, you've got the reach and you've designed the right kind of communication, conversion-oriented communication for them. You've kind of 
taking them forward, then they really convert to a lead. And some of the business may have may have this as a step. Some of the businesses who are, you know, directly dealing with sales may not have lead as one of the steps. The next part is also to what are you doing with the leads? The lead nurturing, converting leads to sales. That also the digital marketing has a role to play there as well. And this entire journey needs to be conversion oriented. You need to have metrics and tools throughout the journey. So I hope you know that just set the context of what role digital marketing plays in any kind of a, 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 a customer journey in any organization. Now taking that forward, let's see uh, if you really need to handle it and you really want to handle it in the best possible way, which is the right way to do it, right? Whether you should do it in-house or you do it, uh, you, you outsource it to some agencies. So let's just start the discussion, right? So what I'll do is I'll just uh, you know quickly create the uh, possibly you know group our discussions into separate several categories, um, and I'll start with the first stage, right? So when we kind of decided, okay, um, I need to take care of it, and you have first set of questions, you know, whether I should do it in house or outsource it to some agencies. Then what are the factors that you should consider? And I would request all of all three of you, Advit, you, uh, Udit, Vedanga, to really uh, help all of us to understand what factors to consider before taking this decision, whether to do it in-house or outsource. Okay. Who would like to start? Yeah. I'll start. Uh, I've been on both the sides. I started. Uh, my marketing journey as a as an agency i had my own agency and i then shipped it to the corporate world so i've seen both sides so i'll try to be neutral uh, as much as possible although i have very strong opinions uh, on this subject uh, but again coming back to factors essentially there are lots of lots and lots of factors but the most important factor that i uh, would say is the skill set that you can afford to have in house right uh, uh, you have a, a certain amount of budget that's allocated for the marketing team resources and uh, if you can afford to hire expensive resources resources who have more than five six seven years of experience at least then you know uh, i would say in-house otherwise it has to be uh, outsourced because you, know, you may not have that requirement uh, the second fact important factor is the uh, uh, how how much ma digital marketing do you need right i mean is it really critical for your business or is it just a nice to have do you uh, are you okay with the basics or do you want really advanced stuff so what i mean is that you know if you're a business that is a starting up or if you're a business who's into retail now for a retailer digital marketing basic digital, digital marketing might work but for uh, an e-commerce business you need to have really advanced digital marketing resources available right so that is another factor on which you will decide whether you want to uh, what kind of resources that you want and based on those resources whether you can afford them in-house or whether you want to outsource them right uh, so there are lots of other factors but i'll let others pitch in and then we can again circle back on this great yeah i think i completely go with uh with i think for us to uh consider and i have unfortunately been part of certain large scale organizations and also in a startup environment so i've seen the very contrasting picture uh, where in the large scale organizations a lot of things are very centralized uh, right and they've been operating from global offices and you have a smaller view uh, from a regional uh, you know regional part of it and you tend to localize certain things and from a digital uh, marketing standpoint and you have always have a uh, factor that what is the scope of work and that scope of work is small is localized in nature you definitely take a third party uh, or, or an or an outsourced help uh, but in a startup environment uh, where, where where things are born here and you have to drive things more globally uh, i think a couple of factors come in play one is definitely you are considered at more at a pnl level where marketing budget is inclusive of the payroll cost so cost is definitely a big factor to, to see okay fine uh, what is the value that i have and what is the scope of work and, and as we rightly said that if we have a uh, you know broader budget in house makes more sense and um, if you don't then out outsource but in that also what i am literally seeing certain certain areas which are still low touch uh, 
which can require a minimum support uh, can be outsourced. But at the end of the day, more core areas in digital marketing on which that entire foundation is laid on, like your part of it or your uh, your key digital strategy part of it. Right? You can actually have it more in house. So it's uh, I would say we have to dice it further the digital marketing. I think this subject and the practice that evolved quite a bit now. So what parts of digital marketing that we need to outsource that we need to figure out and what part that we can keep it in source uh, that but it depends upon uh, the cost. Second pace of work. It's very important that what is the agility? What is the speed of execution that you are looking at? And what are the elements in that whole machinery that you can afford to outsource because an outsource is a timeshare basis. Uh, either do freelancers or agencies it has a multi have multiple projects so the the pace of work you have to factor in uh, as well and uh, third is the ability of teamwork right so if it is like a leaner team internally and you have 10 agencies to manage very difficult it will take that much of bandwidth right and uh, it depends the ratio of internal teams versus external agency management we have to uh, take care of that. So there is a mobilized way of work and, and use bandwidth with a higher impact. So these are the three or four factors I, I uh, got it. Absolutely, absolutely echo with Advait as well as Udit's POV. It's much more dependent on the go-to-market strategy of any brand. How, they, how do they want to introduce themselves? Apart from that, how are they resonating in front of their audiences becomes a very important pivoting point. So let's say, let's compare a neo bank versus a traditional classical bank in this space. There would be a lot of learnings which these traditional banks hold. And these category influences, these category learnings might be very important for them, but uh, there is an innate uh, disadvantage when they don't have any platform experience oriented guy working with them. So at that point, the brand, uh, as Advit mentioned, uh, value addition comes in via a platform owner at that point of view. So it becomes very important how and what challenges are being identi identified because every case there will be a very unique challenge which something we are need to address. And uh, for sure, any agency at this point, even uh, in your heading, 34% of SMBs uh, focus on outsourcing. I am sure if, if we can increase the sample set for sure and encompass more categories, that percentage ratio will be moving up close to 50% ratio because uh, there there are these challenges, be it in a traditional space or be it in an upcoming uh, startup kind of company. Great, great. So, uh, I mean, all I think you've kind of mentioned a lot of factors from skill, budget, to maybe the, uh, the the complexity, the scope, the ability that is needed. Is the the domain understanding or the kind of maybe the the, the product that you offer? So for example, Udit probably you'll be able to help us more on this. Is if you're a B2B company, the decision making is a lot more complicated, right? And outsourcing is a lot has a different set of challenges compared to maybe a, a B2C company. So is the type of product that you offer uh, also has a role to play in this? Oh, definitely. Uh, you touched upon a very right point. I think that knowledge, the business knowledge and business acumen, uh, understanding about the markets and what the product offers, the highly specialized you go, uh, and especially in technology, in a B2B environment, um, it's like more of a techno functional role. You really have to understand what the product does, right? What problems it's trying to solve. And you are you're actually going and talking to more technical people who either are the users or influencers to make the purchases happen, right? Or the buying centers in itself are very technical people like CIO for that matter, right? So you you really have to be very careful in the message and in also in terms of the reach. Outsourcing becomes even more tougher because the business immersion of the outsourcing agency is a little bit difficult, right? Unless you 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 or we have figured it out is Sometimes you've experimented with, with certain external freelancers or agencies, which which are like uh, uh, do multiple projects, they do technology projects, they do non-technology companies as well. 
for them to really you know build an understanding on our business and go deeper into it sometimes you do not get that fine point you know it's always like very superficial but uh, when we have seen people who are in house they are in and out in our own environment their understanding on business sharpens they go more deeper and they are able to understand and build proposition and go and target in a manner uh, that that bring out better result at a faster space right uh, as well and more competitive uh, edge uh, i would say so one size fits all and a very generic messaging in b2b environment in new technology environment doesn't really work so uh, like you touched upon a point uh, on how uh, critical the marketing is at this stage right um, so in terms of the the stage of a company so for example if there is a startup and things are not very clear right and even though you have budget let's say all the there is a tick mark on all other aspects you have a budget you got funded from somewhere but uh, it's critical but right now things like how exactly things will turn out is not very clear is the stage of a company also has a role to play whether you should choose to outsource or not it's uh, more than stage right it is more of you know what is the metric that you're chasing right uh, so i'll give you an example uh, uh, if there's a company that has just started and they have all the budget and they have everything and they're chasing a metric of cac which is uh, cost of customer acquisition right uh, they are not very uh, far sighted they're looking at something very quick they're looking at quick wins other uh, monthly wins so they have monthly targets they have monthly uh, uh, tasks to achieve and they're looking at that whereas in the same space there can be other companies who also has a budget and they are looking at a factor of crpv which is you know how much can you get uh, from lifetime value of a customer so in that case they are far fetched they are looking at at least the next 3 to 5 years and in that case they would say that you know we are not bothered only about acquisition but we also want to build a uh, retention funnel we want to build referral funnels we want to build loyalty uh, all of that and they might choose to go in house whereas the first one might choose to outsource it got it so if it is a quick win then maybe outsourcing is better but if it is long term then possibly you should consider in house as well right correct is that great great yeah. great so i think uh, that's actually let's take us to the next stage let's say if you've taken that decision uh the next question that comes in mind is that uh, what should i outsource and what should i keep in house right and uh, uh like what you also mentioned like it's it's complicated then there's a lot of things that are involved evaluation of the right partner itself is a problem so yeah. what what are the framework that one should use to decide okay this is something that i'll keep in house and this is what i should outsource or you know agencies will come all out and it's a degree provider i'm a commercial marketer so how exactly which one to go after and how to take that decision you know if you guys can share some views on that that would be very helpful sure one one thing that i use very frequently i mean uh, throughout my career i've used is that if it's an activity that requires uh, a lot of experience varied experience not just one industry specific experience or one company specific experience then it's best to outsource and in that case also it is usually the creative activities uh, whether it comes to uh, videos whether it comes to uh, banner ads images or large creative campaigns that need to be sorted out uh, what i have seen is that you know if you have the creative team in house then after a certain point they run out of ideas especially if you have to have campaigns every single month or every single quarter uh, so in that case i have seen that the creative agencies perform the best and that's one one area where i definitely outsource uh, where i definitely like to outsource when it's uh, a lot of creative work that needs to be done right uh, otherwise uh, the other activity which i will choose to outsource is where uh, you know it's, it's a new function it's a new domain right even if it's performance marketing uh, there are some agencies uh, who are specialized in that area so for example there are some agencies who do performance marketing but they specialize in running facebook ads for speakers who do uh, ad tech so if that specialty exists then that's another case to outsource that activity yeah, I, I, okay yeah please i i agree with um, advait i think um, 
in a b2b environment when this is a constant journey to evolve uh, what do we outsource and what do we insource and sometimes the, these decisions are not controllable you know so what happens is that you decide to outsource a particular practice let's suppose for a year one maybe in a year two you might just see that okay fine i want to build that in house as a capability and then outsource it's a, it's a constant evaluation that we see second is that certain local activities and activities which would require some level of innovation or some level of reputation can be outsourced now i give you an example something like a link building right or uh, something like uh, you know getting the backlinks right so it can be easy it's a very standard operating procedure right and, and that can easily be outsourced uh, creative I completely agree with that with is something that we, uh, we have outsourced because one you get more fresh ideas and and more diverse ideas out there uh, like i give you a very specific example design of social posts right uh, social is the way to go so the design of social posts can be outsourced but the content for social posts can come in from us right because it's more contextual and it's it's more uh, more related to our business and that situation right uh at the same time content for uh, like blogs or uh, content uh, uh, for certain long forms can be outsourced because that's an industry perspective somewhere outside in perspective can be researched and can be can be brought in as as a thing something that we see as in source is like very digital marketing as a strategy what do we really to do how do we do uh, pr as a work right content marketing across right where we talk about product pages or product marketing i'm just giving a very example uh, examples to make it more relevant for the audience here uh, uh, that's a, how we choose that okay and this is a scope of work that we would like to outsource and these are a couple of competencies uh, that we would uh, keep it in house great yep. so you, in, that's in line with what udit and advit pointed out it's it's high also i'll trace back to your last question it's highly dependent on the stage of the organization also what i feel so um, coming back to the same comparison a new bank versus a traditional bank a new bank might have fewer investments on their platform experiences and again coming back rolling back to the learning bit however a traditional bank would be structured in a very tr traditional way they will have a product team a business team a finance team apart from that they will be setting up a digital team however there are handshakes which are required in these cases between an outsourcing partner as well as that in house team as well or the digital marketing team it becomes very important without having a handshake because it's a in some lines it's a 50 50% activity where in some case where udit mentioned uh the creative aspect can be built with the outsourcing agency but the in-housing aspect can be building the content narrative however there are cases where we have seen traditional clients or traditional organizations take a lot of time in getting these things done example a time sensitive element be it something related to the qatar world cup if you want to dominate on that space a new bank or a new industries or a new firm would try to dominate that space much more easier because the tag would be lesser what we have seen because there mm -hmm. are much more ropes to get into when you work with a traditional firm you need much more lncs in place which needs to be done what i feel so great great i think i've we've touched upon a lot of things here uh, one thing i would like to know from you uh, vidanta is um, from an agency perspective like when you go out so like you know what you guys mentioned that there's some there like a quick wins like creative services specialist kind of a services or repetitive services or you know wherein the domain expertise is not involved and in decorating creating social posts these are like you know which is which can be easily justified so uh, and lot more agencies go out as a you know we'll do everything for you is that a right approach for an agency or you know taking those quick wins and go, so how do you get like you guys approach and uh pitch out to the clients this if you perfect give some cross same also so i'll, I'll share i'll share some light on that uh earlier previously uh the specific which you mentioned a platform oriented approach was of very much focus now it has become much more of a category focus which we have pivoted towards or performance is pivoted towards 
so now it's much more of learning rather than only creative learning is coming in creative learning in the banking space how it has worked for other accounts accordingly what are the benchmarks coming in not only creative alignments it's also on the seo bits it's also on the paid narrative bits not only that working on the crm bits so it it has expanded on a very different topography at this point rather than having only platform experience and saying only google ads will be run by this agency or facebook ads will be taken up by an agency so nowadays when we go up out there of course we showcase what kind of excellence and coe teams we have in built apart from that we try to showcase the narrative on the case study bits as well as the capabilities which we have executed in the last couple of years for our existing partners and how they have gained be it sustaining it be it improving it be it inorganically improving it by 4x 5x so across the board so everyone's nearing up or gearing up to understand and identify a specific solution for themselves so for an organization it becomes very important to understand which proficient platform to be used not only that how that platform can be leveraged for that category at that space let's say for an example in bnpl space buy now pay later which was pretty much prevalent in 2020 across the board there were so many brands which came up with a traditional partner on board it and they issued cards now with regulations in place everyone's pivoting towards lending space again there is undue competition or more service providers coming into the space this is again relating into uh, more competition not only on the platform level but on the category space itself how are they impacting the existing service provider and what what are the scenarios for the new ones so i mean the industry's from a agency perspective is shifting from platform focus to category focus so that is the right way to absolutely because uh, in in our cases oh, there is no something called oems are in motor and manufacturing bits but uh, in case of ours our oems are much more your uh, googles facebooks or the main partners so across the board what yeah. we see the pivot is coming from their end as well as well as if we don't adapt towards this measures we are not able to provide solutions to the overall span it's much more limited to one scope of item we cannot export ourselves to another product and give them a solution there right great so uh, one thing that question that comes in my mind is if we really go with that as a technique and uh, you know we are taking out okay which is the creative part which is the best pair in this okay link building somebody is doing a particular kind of a back link building and is good at it outsourcing that activity to that particular person freelancer or an agency but you know you might end up dealing with a lot of agencies a lot of freelancers or is it that you you know you outsource it to some agencies and direct all the uh, relationships to that agency so what's the right model there that fits in uh, have one agencies and have experts be part of the same or deal with all of them and how uh, through some in house resources how do you guys deal with that uh, Probably today or other you guys can share more on that. I'll just add before Udit and Adit joins. The current trend is to aggregate everything. What we have seen in market, a lot of partners are moving towards one specific outsourcing partner itself, rather than breaking it up. As well as Udit mentions something similar of a, of a case, having ten partners on board and managing them, it becomes a hassle. Instead, have one partner who can provide. as much as possibility as much as scope of work and services across sure put it at it got yeah sure i'll start so uh, yes the aggregation is happening i'm not sure if i like that idea a lot or not because you know uh, very very few agencies uh, in the entire country who would be able to handle everything and give the best at it right i mean uh, i'm sure performix can performix is one agency who can but there are 10000 agencies who are just specialized in one small thing here and there and outsourcing everything to them is a huge risk for me so the kind of approach that i usually like is that you know accountability is always in house right so uh, i would have certain people in house uh, who would be accountable to manage agencies and get the work done 
right now uh, one person might be managing three agencies or they might be managing one single agent uh, which is uh, able to do all the work right uh, that is purely uh, you know i mean i mean that's not the main criteria the main criteria is having someone accountable in house who's responsible to get the work done as long as there is that one person or two people or three people uh, in house then uh, you know it's absolutely fine whether you find one agency or multiple aggregation is the dream for everyone uh, every company wants that you know we have only one account manager who's who comes to a meeting we tell him this needs to be done and then you know it's done by the next week uh, but like i said you know very few agencies can deliver that so i i kind think um, i agree with uh, with anga and with uh, i think my view point here is it also depends where you are uh, in in your journey from an organization standpoint right and uh, i think pandemic has opened this whole culture of gig workers right uh, there are people who started to really specialize and uh, do very specific very focused jobs um, and and you know and, and continue to do that way the second you know not sure if you guys have followed that uh, phenomenon of uh, the big resignation in us right mm -hmm. and uh, the quiet exit uh, which is happening in the industry there are so many voluntary and involuntary exits are happening uh, in the industry which has actually created a very large talent pool also at a very affordable prices right so sometimes uh, you know um, i decide on two four parameters you know one what is the scope of work now the scope of work is something which is i require a very highly specialized skill but i do not want it in a continuous basis i need it for a short term project and we have right freelancers to go after and there is a there is a whole pool of freelancers that we can bring into okay and there is specialized people uh it's like you call a surgeon on visit in a doctor uh, in an hospital even that hospital doesn't have the doctor on the panel it's it's like that uh from an analogy standpoint uh the other is uh, uh, the the uh, flexibility part of it uh, you know uh and 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 the management control so for example when you go to an agency uh they are more expensive compared to freelancers but they have a better management like for example if the free there there is a uh, low cadre of accountability and responsibility on a freelancer if he goes out sick he goes out sick and do about it your timelines is kept hanging right because for him it's just one project it totally doesn't work out but with an agency it's a relationship that is at the question right uh, they the loyalty of the client the testimonial of the client matters a lot plus they have a diverse pool so they will try and make sure that it it delivers so it depends upon the criticality of a particular project also and uh, and the quality so with an agency you are must right fine i'm i'm taken care of right uh, with an agency freelancer you have to take that risk and you have to go, go with that and uh, the, the third and the last part is the cost part of it now like for example uh, you know i i start i i'd worked in organizations which were like a starting organizations sometimes agencies become very expensive uh, as a route you find the same work the management is very hard i stand by to that but then you you say that okay fine manage a very high quality work i cannot afford an agency i would rather go with freelancers right so fine i'll, I'll go with freelancers i can't afford an onm that's fine or or a very heavy digital marketing agency but the same set of talent pool uh, if you are able to dive in with freelancers so be it because at the end of the day it's a function of people people are products in that and who do the thinking and who deliver so that's what my view is you know, one 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 point which i uh, quickly want to add is that you know the incentive of a business owner or function owner like as a, as a marketing head is not there's no incentive for me to have less number of agencies or you know aggregate everything but the incentive is only and only to deliver better results right so that is the number one aspect always and then i can decide you know as long as the work is getting delivered then i can decide you know should i have an aggregator should i have multiple agencies should i have freelancers that's a second uh, uh, choice that i have yeah i think if that says a kind of a basic principle you keep in mind it'll be easier for you to decide that's that's great so now i think we've covered uh, in bits and pieces 
we've done our discussion on this who's the right outsourcing partner uh, you guys have already shared a lot on this uh, probably a little bit more on uh, uh, you know what questions to ask but probably you know people have different pricing model retainership or performance pay so while deciding on the partner piece uh, i think those are the aspects we possibly have missed out in the discussion today if you can highlight a little bit more give more information on that part that will be very helpful so so i'll tell you the uh, the best way that most of the marketing leaders you uh, uh, uh vidang it should be a great insight for you also uh, if you don't already use it i am part of five cmo whatsapp groups right and okay. every day there's somebody asking that you know i have this work uh, which is the best agency right and we all go by that we all trust each other like anything we all support each other on all the groups if there are three or four people who will talk up, uh, tell the name of one particular agency right nothing else is important that's all we care about really yeah, yeah. that has a huge, uh, that word of mouth has a uh, it's it's definitely number one as compared to yeah. anything else so of so, really building, building over that itself the word of mouth bit yes next step would be what they do is eventually open it up from compliance pov also they want one more agency to come in and give another rating so there are different approaches which you come to understand and accordingly you can identify how that agency is comprehending your product and understanding those need and how to resonate it in front of their customers via communication narratives via creative narrative or via basic Uh, link building or content narratives so it is very important to have those kind of alignments and have multiple agencies up there understanding them and taking a view it the devil lies in the detail of that proposal from multiple agencies coming in because there are uh, innate requirements from each and every agencies to reach your targets and in case some targets are not being reached or in case there are shortcomings uh there are mitigation steps which are required to action those we need to identify those flags need to be in place so agency helps in those alignments for sure great yeah and just to add here i think um, adbhut and ranga put in the right points uh, just to add here uh, with respect to responsibility and uh, the body of work what vidanga talked talked about and uh, uh, i would just say sometimes you know there are times when we don't get referenceability right uh, you know uh, sometimes where we just say oh okay this is a credential which i get from the agency what also matters who are the people behind it right so give a lot of value to the experience that that agency has so i think one other day is when you judge any agency by the number of years they have in the industry it is an important uh, parameter but also very important who are the people really behind uh, the agency are they practitioners uh, are they academicians uh, are they themselves uh, you know uh, rolling up their sleeves and and jumping into the waters or are they going to be you know people who are not related to the work and like looks like from an investor standpoint so i we put a lot of emphasis in terms of the people who are running the show and how committed they are to to run the show uh, as well so just to add that bit as well yeah the last last bit i'll add to this is uh, the majority of the finance organization right now this might uh, uh, not be a very obvious choice but you know if the finance organization is very mature then and they are the ones who will have the final say then pricing is also extremely extremely important yeah. uh, very rarely you will see an agency with a uh, who's asking for more money uh, getting shortlisted as compared to an agency with similar skills and offerings Uh, uh so so that's also very important great so people finance strategy they are proposing got it so i think that some some set up uh, the whole ecosystem is built with partnership what what i i'll come to it's partnership among the product teams the business teams the legal finance compliance across the board if those handshakes keep on happening there are positive fractions across your digital marketing aspects on an organic level also in organic so it keeps on happening got it great 
I think in, with that and what Advit also pointed initially, probably one of the strategy agencies should adopt is to ask them to join all these CMO groups. Um, yeah, all these <laughs> uh, clients at least. And uh, that might help them to acquire more clients than they joining it by themselves. Okay, so um, I think it forward, while we have covered a lot of things here, is there any, any other aspect that you want to cover in terms of the common mistakes to avoid while outsourcing? That we haven't covered so far. <clears throat> so, okay, one thing which I want to mention is uh, you know, every every brand has set of campaigns that come out, right? Uh, so, some some have campaigns every three months, six months, yearly, and so on, and some have campaigns that come out uh, weekly, fortnightly, and so on. Now, speed is one factor, but the other more important factor is what is the dependency of those campaigns. In the business teams, right? Uh, so, if the business teams, for example, in uh, let's say uh, pharma, right, the business teams will probably define the type of campaign based on the products that they think will sell the more. So, the dependency will be very, very heavy on the business team. So, in that case, uh, in most teams will function much, much better as compared to an outsource. I'm not saying that outsource won't work, but usually, as a generic rule, uh, there's a very heavy dependency on the business teams over there, right? Uh, whereas uh, other companies where the marketing de uh, departments are fairly independent, they're not so heavily dependent because they have, you know, maybe just five products or 10 products or very few set of products, or they have to always promote the same set of products, or they have only one category, not like e-commerce companies who are, you know, who are handling, uh, you know, tens of categories then uh, outsourcing can also uh, give better results or similar results uh, so that dependency on the business function is also a huge factor Got it. and just to add here uh, to this um, couple uh, one of the things that i would say is uh, i think cost is important but uh, just in the matter of cost let's not select the most affordable player I think uh, it is also very important to see what value, what experience, and what output and outcome that you are getting, right? Please no emphasis on that. I think uh, that is very important because that's the most important success for any marketer, right? Uh, the budget spent is soon forgotten. The outcomes delivered are, are more often remembered. Uh, so I think uh, that is one. The second is that uh, just because you have an agency, the thing will get completed, which means that putting everything in the hands of agency and you sit back and relax would really won't work. Uh, it is an extended team. And uh, uh, I think uh, the, the participation has to be immersive on both sides. Uh, you just can't uh, delegate and, and forget about it. Uh, because they are external partners, you can do as much. So you have to treat them as your own team. Which brings me to the part that the cultural fit is very, very important when we select an agency. Um, sometimes, you know, an agency is really, very good, uh, but it's not culturally fitting. The people, the team is not culturally fitting with your team. Uh, somewhere you would see the difference in output, somewhere you see the difference in engagement. At the end of the day, uh, I would say it's a function of people and relationships, and that's how the best mind created juices, and then the results would come. It has to be uh, the teams have to come together. That relationship has to grow in that manner. The culture of it, I would give a lot of value uh, to to do it as well. Great, great. Absolutely. I can do micro. Well, sorry, Kapil. Two points: macro and micro goals across the board. As Udit mentioned cost shouldn't be only the factor of looking into it a proposal initially whenever an agency is reached out for a plan or a proposal it comes from a target perspective once those target alignments are or those wip first phase of proposal goes out there are a lot of cuts edits happening from the product teams itself saying Ki ye is pe spend nahi karenge. we shouldn't be spending on these because this do doesn't have those conversion alignments instead it might have a macro alignment of increasing your brand nuances for a longer time frame itself and those do impact so understanding macro micro both are very important and just for 
focusing on a micro alignment won't suffice the overall picture. Great, great. I think that we've actually covered quite holistically all that is needed. Uh, probably, I mean, one thing that I would like to add is that uh, the gestation period of every initiative needs to be considered and make sure that you're giving that. Don't uh, stop it half cooked. So make sure that you're well aware of it and probably, uh, uh, and then and only then start in, in that direction. So taking this discussion forward, uh, like Pradip, you mentioned that you can't just sit back and relax, like you have a role to play. Um, and now within that, what is the role that we have to play if it is outsourcing? And how do we really evaluate the performance, the reporting, and how should I like how should I really behave as a good uh, client uh, with an outsourcing partner? Uh, if you guys can share more lights on that. I would just say it's like part of our extended team, right? And somewhere you have to build uh, an outsourcing partner in your market map, right? So, so it has to be, it has to fit in into your org map so that the relationships are mapped properly across, right? Sometimes, you know, Kapil, uh, in fact, uh, we have taken outsourcing partners and uh, for the best collaboration, we have actually given them email IDs of our own company, right? Uh, so that they collaborate well, they, they become the part of our extensive team. So find a place for them in your org map versus uh, stretching your hand outside and say, hey, I'm just getting something out uh, with, with, uh, with our outsourcing partner. Second, I have never treated them, any of the outsourcing partners as a vendor, right? The moment you say that, somewhere the relationship is very temporary and regional. So it has to be long-term, it has to be like a, like a relationship uh, with you, and you have employees. So the reporting structure has to be in a way that you have to conduct X number of people into your team. Where would you place them? Who would they report to? And uh, that understanding we build in our own organization as well. So that, uh, and their expectation and outcome is also being set to the agency in that manner. So that they know, okay, this is the way uh, we have to report. Uh, this is the way business sees the results. And uh, these are the people who are responsible and accountable for a certain outcome. Great. Uh, anything more on reporting? Uh, uh, another, another than... aspect, uh, sorry, uh, another aspect that needs to be covered over there is that uh, what are the terms of engagement? Right. Uh, uh, obviously, you need to have them part of your team. You need to have them part of your family. You need to uh, have mutual respect. But uh, you also need to understand what are the uh, what are the incentives for both the parties, right? If the incent if they if the company is on retainership, right, then it becomes an issue because uh, uh, the incentive of the agency is not aligned with your agency in most of the cases. If you're perf driving performance, right? So if there is a share of performance and that kind of a model executed, then you can have a more flexible reporting system because the accountability is already with the agency. Right. Uh, if the accountability is not with the agency, if it is purely a retentional uh, model, then essentially you have to have in-house uh, team members, like I talked about earlier, who are, who are accountable, who have to manage the uh, reporting of the agency. Yeah. Wait, so guys, we have actually, I think we've exceeded the time limit uh, by about 15 minutes. So I think let's just open the floor for questions uh, like this would be a lot of people who have the questions so i have there are a few questions that are already there in the question panel i'll start with that and uh, everyone if you have any question and you want to address it to one particular person you can mention their name or if you want to address it to everyone you can just just post it as a question and i'll take all those questions in the chronological order so there's a question from Hemal kenya as a new startup in the b2c space should one outsource SEO or keep it in-house? As most agencies ch charge substantially for the same. So who wants to take it up? So answer is uh, very simple, right? I mean, how do you, uh, what is the importance of value in your organization, right? Are you seeing SEO to be a game changer and you want to have a lot of organic traffic in the next three, four, five years or more, or maybe the next one year or two year also? Or you think that SEO is, you know, only and only uh, we just need to do it because every other company is doing it. 
or you know uh, ASO is probably more important than SEO for you, right? Uh, you need to evaluate on that basis. And uh, if the answer is that SEO is really key for your organization, then you need to find the best skill set. Now that then you decide whether you have to outsource it or whether you have to do it in house, whether you want to hire someone or whether you want to outsource it the best SEO agency of the country. But first you determine what is the importance of SEO for your organization. Absolutely, absolutely uh, in line with Ajwit's point here, but it also depends as example, it was mentioned a new startup example. There are situations if your web entity or the technology is not in place and you're still in position of identifying how to approach or build that then yes an SEO consultant or an SEO agency consulting should be thought of because that will enable you on their go to market strategy bit. If example scenario, your website is already in place and you're facing undue challenges or complexity competition from other service providers, be it is it related to only the landscape or is it related to the technology of the website or the app? At that moment, you would require a specialist if a specialist is not there in your organization. That innate sense needs to come into play and understanding. And accordingly, if SEO is the thing, what is the end goal from it? Is it only visibility or from SEO? Are you planning to drive 100,000 installs? So. Got it. So this next question from uh, Nilanjana Ghosh. What would you suggest for a non-profit since non-profit is always challenged with marketing budget? I mean, so I think I would say. Question is not yeah, clear. Sorry, if it's clear. Not here to me. Please, please. I would just say that at, at um, I think non profits are also growing very fast and they are of all sizes today. Um, if it is if it's in a mid stage and uh, 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 you know a support which is uh, starting up like from a voluntary support standpoint, I think um, freelancing could be a good option. Uh, but if there is a NGO which is of a national scale and have achieved a lot of funds but want to expand into uh, international geographies and would want to uh, build a presence, credibility, and social presence for show and tell the world, I think uh, there has to be a more professional approach uh, building it with the agencies uh, as well and some in house uh, resources. Got it. Great. So this next question from Nitu. Uh, I'm actually a little rushing a little fast because there's a lot of questions and we have limited time. So let's try to cover as many as possible. So this is an interesting aspect that she's asking about. Uh, she's saying that what's the agency costing model that brands prefer? Most agencies charge on a retainer basis, but there is a fixed retainer plus variable, a preferred model. Any other costing model that brands prefer? That's one part we haven't talked about yet. I mean, we, I, I work with, it depends on the work, right? If it's performance related, uh, there are today a lot of agencies who also work on sharing the performance, which is sharing the revenue. Uh, so it is retainer plus revenue share. Both, right? If it is a creative agency, then it's very hard to judge uh, the performance. So in that case, it is mostly uh, retainership or the uh, amount of work, right? Number of hours that are put in, right? That's the model uh, usually taken over there. Uh, so yeah, I mean there are agencies who work on the revenue share also. Got it. So this question from uh, Sudan Shu uh, for a new startup in an interior design business where funds are little tight, should we have an in-house person to handle multiple media channels like Facebook, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, uh, where the main goal right now is lead generation? If you have basic proficient knowledge as it is a small startup what or a new startup what i'm understanding of then yes but uh, accordingly you will need to understand what are the challenges you are facing and how you need to circumvent those challenges may not be all of them but some of them so you need to identify a sort of basket where you are identifying mitigating those challenges and another box where those challenges cannot be mitigated by in-house people for them, you would need a consultant with you, if not an agency, but a consultant just giving you the next steps. Got it. Got it. 
the next question is from aditya i think he's from an agency what is the best way for agencies to connect with bigger organizations are there any platform to start with hidden secret for an agency if there is any whatsapp groups yeah absolutely adri did give out a sauce element the whatsapp group Okay. Uh, so I think what what I use when I was I had a marketing agency like as I was bootstrapped, I used to attend a lot of events, right? Because at these events I meet a lot of entrepreneurs, and uh, you know I could share my ideas and what I could do. Uh, that's what worked for me. I I just want to give one one uh, one nugget out here, um, and to some extent uh, go with as with what he's saying. I think network matters a lot. For large organizations, uh, uh, trust me, uh, uh, large organization we used to get pitches almost every day, sometimes three in a day. Uh, multiple agencies reaching out, uh, but what happened? And we we tend to go to people where we have more references, or we used to come through a network, right? So do uh, invest a lot in building that network and and. Uh, Uh, don't be in a rush to get a project. I think uh, just be in a rush to really listen to the challenges maybe that large company is is facing, and how you can actually help that uh, in that networking conversation could be remembered well. Great. So guys, uh, there's a few more questions, and I'll be taking a couple more. Uh, but before I do that, I just have a quick poll for you. Uh, we have uh, the next. panel discussion which is on since we are closing on this year we are doing a panel discussion on digital marketing in 2023 and we are inviting some really good panelists on the same so if you guys wants to attend that just mention yes and we'll automatically register you for the same so while you guys are responding to this uh, let me have a question is a question from somebody who's named himself as nz um nisar khair how digital marketing affects the iot or metaverse is there any relationship between the two anybody wants to take it up iot and metaverse and the role digital marketing industry has on the same any comments on the same see i think both of the uh, iot and metaverse um, and you know metaverse is still new uh, to me as a person and i'm still exploring and discovering so uh, difficult to comment upon the role of digital marketing there the platform in itself has to uh, uh, grow and bit more mature will it be an ar platform or a vr platform or a, or an absolutely a merger of these two i don't know uh, but from an iot standpoint i feel uh, it's a platform that enable you to do a better trackability efficiency and uh, uh, build more uh, process Uh, you know cadences to to put together and uh, that's how i feel uh, you know we can use the ai part of that in the whole digital marketing gamut to make sure that how i can keep track of my program how can be much more smarter to response what do i optimize it can create more speed and agility into my programs right uh, but would that be a channel no it's a technology that would enable digital marketing to be more responsive uh, that's my my view point for iot i would say digital analytics becomes a pivot for it smarter understanding ai driven bits which you just mentioned nlp utilizations those are the bits which become a crux of iot what i feel so and for metaverse though it is a little bit far future perspective oriented because it's a web 3 technology and current digital marketing is much more oriented towards web 2 technologies of course there are opportunities well advanced in those spaces as well a lot of organizations are utilizing such kind of nuances at this point be it utilizing nft tokens and creating utilities out of it for their uh, specific brand itself uh, recently dc comics uh, launched their own nft tokens for batman which is a different kind of collectible variations example an owner of bat can get free uh, screenings for any dc movies that's an utility alignment towards it so proposing that and creating a community becomes a very important thing in metaverse oriented things 
great great so this next question from pankaj i think this is one aspect we probably have missed it yeah yeah ajit you want to add uh kabal i'll have to jump for our meeting uh sure. if that's okay yeah sure, thanks sure. great thank interaction you, thank you. so let's take that as a last question we've already exceeded by 5 minutes thanks a lot for taking time out ajit great so this question is from pankaj uh it's about in you know, how to hire the in house team so if can one person hire in house be able to handle the aspects of digital marketing including google and social campaign i think if you can guys can throw some more lights on um you know if we have decided to build an in house team uh, how should i really structure it and that would probably give a holistic information in this regard i think i'll i'll like to go with the competency rather than uh, you know putting it across uh, differently so what competency that we are trying to build in house right now one of the competency could be content and content would have manifestation right it could be social it could be long form it could be seo content you know what it could be so that is that is an important part uh, of, of of the digital marketing part so, because it has to be more immersive and closer to business uh it depends now depends on the scale and size of your business if you would want 10 content guys or you want a one content guy right and uh, you want that one content guy to work with a design guy outside so depend where, where you are in the journey of the company so the competency that i would see one is content second is that performance marketing as the overall another competency right now you you say that okay fine i want to outsource my seo part of it because i'm not that yet big okay fine you do that part of it but then who will run campaigns on it who will plan campaigns on it right it's a digital marketing so for me the two core competency would be content and digital marketing planning if you have these two competencies in house then you can say what branch are externally and what more you need to augment internally as the organization scales up absolutely we need owners or uh, can one person hi hired in house will be able to handle all aspects realistically it's a challenging task to ask if to put it in a subjective answer but uh, it depends on the proficiency of the person also uh example if if the performance marketing aspect and the lead aspect is rolling up to the main level revenue povs then there needs to be much more layering much more dependencies need to be placed rather than only one man show kind of a person so it depends but uh, for a big time organization as udit mentioned there has to be an owner in the brand side as well as in the agency side of things driving both aspects together so that is very important as much as you keep on scaling your teams no great so i think that some some set up we kind of covered the outsourcing challenges related to that and kind of how to handle the in-housing bit as well towards the end so at this point of time i really want to thank you udit and with vidanga for taking time out i personally have learned a lot i mean there are a lot of aspects we touch upon and a lot of critical aspects you kind of aggregated and it has been been quite useful um so thank you very much and for the participant and just launching this another poll how just share with us how this session has went for you if it's uh, uh, whatever is your feedback uh, it will help us to improve our self further any fi final word of advice for everyone uh, udit vidanga if you guys wants to mention before we close the session um i think we covered most parts of it uh today uh i think the uh, i would say digital is 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 an ever growing uh, domain and it's, it's it's one of the most exciting and uh, uh, learning uh, ability because it's keep changing so uh, be relevant and uh, keep learning in this domain you will discover more and more new thing that will keep surprising you as a I I just keep learning this, uh, but I I never think that I learn it. I I know it all. Great. Yeah, absolutely agree. Digital marketing ever growing, ever learning curve there. But uh, one added bit would be, uh, don't be frugal on the, those points. Uh, an agency won't be able to under understand, interpret the needs of an organization. 
there are agencies of bigger scale, smaller scale across the wide scope who are there to support small business organizations, mammoth organizations across the board. So feel free to reach out and accordingly focus on the details. The devil lies in that only, the plans and pictures, how, how to move ahead. Great, so thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, and thanks everyone for your participation. It's been a great session. Thank you very much. The session is now closed. Thank you, Kapil. Thank, thank you. you.